What are the rules for writing in multiple points of view? Should you split the page time up evenly between all of the characters? How do you even choose which characters to give POV time? That's what we're talking about in today's Writing Workshop Wednesday. I've already done a few different videos on POVs. This one goes through choosing the right POV for your book and it talks about the pros and cons of writing in first, second, or third person. And this one gets into head hopping, what it is, why it's bad, and what the difference is between an omniscient narrator and third person limited with a multi POV cast. But today we're going to get into the rules, if there are any, on writing a novel with multiple points of view. Thanks very much to Alice, whose comment inspired this video topic. Alice said, it'd be amazing to see a video addressing POV changes, especially outliers. What happens when a first person character becomes unconscious in the last chapter of a book? Or is it okay to shift POVs well past the half point of a story? Or how do you balance a split POV between two main characters? POV is so complicated to me. You are not alone, Alice. There's no rule book on POVs, not that I'm aware of anyway. What it comes down to is purpose or intent. Why are you choosing to have these characters get their own POV time? I love reading novels with big casts with multiple points of view because I love seeing all these different takes on what's happening different perspectives on this one story that's unfolding. But the key here is that each of these characters also have their own arc. The biggest mistake I see writers make in my workshops is that their story really actually only has one protagonist, one character at the center of the story, but they're writing in multiple points of view because they just want to let the reader in on what this side character really thinks of the protagonist or what this side character's backstory is that the main character doesn't know yet, but you, the reader, need to know. There needs to be more to it than that. Each character that gets POV time in a book needs to go through a transformation. They need to come out on the other side of the novel changed and all of their emotional journeys need to be tied into the main arc of the story. Okay, so once you decide which characters in your book are going to get POV time, how do you decide how much page time to give each of them? Does it have to be equal? And like you said, Alice, can you introduce a new POV more than halfway through the story? As I was outlining this video, I was thinking about my own novels in my head and going through them and thinking, okay, most of the books I've written are from the point of view of one protagonist, but I do have some, some books and one series that are like multiple points of view, but I don't know if I have actually broken any rules. And then I realized, wait, hang on. I do have a book where I was writing in dual points of view but then I threw in a third point of view well past the halfway point of the book. I did that in my novel, Spell and Spindle. The two main characters of this book, um, Penny and Chance, are the characters that you see on the cover. And in the beginning, and through the halfway point, the book alternates back and forth and gives them equal page time. You get a chapter from Chance's point of view and then a chapter from Penny's point of view and it goes back and forth. But in chapter 30, in the last quarter of the book, I shift to a third point of view. Now this character isn't new at all. She's Chance's older sister, Constance, and she's been in pretty much every chapter leading up until this point. So the reader knows her well, they just haven't been inside her head yet. And when I outlined this book, I did not at all intend to give Constance any POV chapters. I had outlined it only between Penny and Chance, going back and forth all the way to the end. But when I got to this point in the draft, I realized that Constance had just as much of an arc, just as much of a transformation as Penny and Chance did. And this particular chapter, chapter 30, which I had originally outlined to be from Chance's point of view, it needed to be in hers. She gets one more POV chapter towards the end too. And then the final chapter actually is mostly omniscient, although it does kind of hone down into Penny's point of view for the last page or so. So why did I do that? And why did my editor like it? And why did it work? The best piece of advice I can give you here when it comes to making decisions about POV is to think like a reader and not like an author. If you find yourself wanting to do something like this, like introduce a new character POV more than halfway through the book, or stick with one POV throughout the very book, but then at the very, very end, give us another character's perspective, or switch to an omniscient narrator for your last chapter like I did. Do you, as the author, find yourself thinking, okay, the reader might get a little bit confused or put off by why I'm doing this, but if they just hang in there, 
they're gonna see why I needed to do that later on in the book. If you find yourself thinking at any point with any decision in your book, just hang in there, reader. I promise if you put up with this, it'll pay off then this is a mistake. Those thoughts are a big giant red flag because readers don't wanna hang in there. We want to be entertained. I didn't have that red flag gut feeling when, when it came to giving Constance a point of view chapter. And the reason I felt like it was the right call and something that I would want to see as a reader of this book was first of all, because she had, like I said, been so present in every scene and the reader knew her so well that I knew it wouldn't feel quite as abrupt to give her a little bit of page time. But more importantly, from the beginning and through most of the novel up through this point, both from Chance's and Penny's perspectives, Constance is painted as this cheerful, endlessly optimistic good girl. But as I drafted, and again, this was not in my outline, I began to see that Constance had layers. And what was going on in this adventure, Penny and Chance's adventure, was having a major impact on her too. It was peeling back those layers and revealing the real girl inside. She really surprised me with her depth. And I knew that by this point in the story, as a reader, I would be more than ready to jump into her head and get a glimpse into what she's really thinking. This wasn't about making things easier for me as a writer. It wasn't like chapter 30 would have been really hard to write from Chance's point of view, so I decided to make it easier on myself and go for Constance's point of view instead. That'd be another big red flag too if you're just hopping into another character's point of view to give the reader some information that you're too lazy to figure out how to work into your main character's point of view, that's not a good reason to do multiple points of view. Think like a reader and ask yourself if you knew nothing about this story except for how much you've read up until this point and you got here, would this frustrate you? Would it make you wanna put the book down? Would it confuse you? or would it enhance the reading experience and make you feel more invested in the story? That means it's the right decision. If you make a choice with the POVs in your novel and you feel like you need to justify it to your readers, that might be your gut telling you that this isn't actually the best choice for your story because we don't get to explain ourselves to our readers. This is what they get. They get the story and that's it. We can't hover overhead while they read and whisper, Psst. I know that POV shift in chapter 12 seems kind of random, but you're gonna get why that character is so important in the sequel. When it comes to writing different POVs in your novel, there's nobody to grant you permission and there's no one to forbid you from experimenting. And you should experiment. Don't limit yourself or brush off an idea that really excites you just because you're afraid. Just work on developing and listening to your reader gut. Ask yourself, am I doing this because it makes the writing experience easier or am I doing it because I know it's going to make the reading experience better? For today's writing workshop activity, tell me all about the novels with multiple points of view that you think do it best and why especially those novels that experiment a little bit with POV changes. What choices did the author make with POVs in this book and why did you think it was the right call? And if you're still feeling confused about POVs, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell because next week we're gonna be getting into the weeds and talking about the nitty gritty specifics about writing from multiple points of view and how characters refer to each other and think of each other in the narration depending on whose POV you're in. That's it for today. If you found this video helpful, I would very much appreciate if you hit that like button and I will see you Friday with a fiction fix it. Until then, keep writing.